Hello and welcome to week four in psychology seminar. And what we are doing uh, for the first time in this class, what we're seeing is a chapter, chapter three, which is continuing to another week. So the chapters one, two, three, four, five don't align with the weeks. And this is something to keep in mind because some courses that we have here at KV in the psych program I know they have many more chapters than occur in a particular than the number of weeks in a class and therefore there are weeks in which you are covering two chapters and there are classes like this and positive psych and I think maybe death and dying that have only 10 or so chapters so they're spread out over 16 weeks you might have a couple weeks where you're covering more than one chapter there's chapters the content is independent of the weeks in the class so a good lesson here this first time in this class that it occurs we are here in week four but we're still in chapter three now chapter three has to do with time management and task management and i introduce you to my personal method of managing my time and tasks and I promote it because uh, it has been a long trial and error uh, there are people that talked about having all these binders and planners and stuff and I have I have those stacks of things the closest I ever got to a successful planner was actually a uh, Franklin Covey Franklin planners and as a specific methodology but I wanted something digital so I could easily move to-do list items around rather than writing them and so even though for about four years I religiously used Franklin planners very successfully I decided I was going to abandon those they're expensive too so um, I do mine digitally. And what you're gonna be introduced to is the idea, and I'll just summarize it here, although it's, it's outlined in the course book, is when I'm doing um, my management of my time, I block out all the available times that I have in my week. I just block them all out. These are all my available times to address my to-do list. The 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 places in my schedule that are already that are already fixed like class time or meetings or anything like that maybe for you it's big chunks of work time those are in there and they're off limits I can't multitask in those areas maybe some of you can but it, not the most successful way of approaching but I block off other times and when I was working and going to school that meant weekends and evenings sometimes even early mornings is when I was able you know that's I'm finding time when I can do things but rather than selecting a task and assigning it a time I just say this is a time I'm going to be addressing my to-do list my to-do list is created based on two sets of items one set of items are things that require me to think a lot. They're, they can be arduous. Even though I might enjoy them, they're, re they're requiring me to be very engaged in what I'm doing. I call those high cognitive load tasks. Those would include preparing for class. Those would include grading, putting projects together, doing the budget stuff for KV as a manager there those kinds of things many of them are work related and then also maybe things um, at home like working on our budget or balancing the checking account or something like that that'll be stuff that's in the high cognitive load on the other list is the low cognitive load this is my chores my activities phone calls I need to make quick items you know that I'll just I just need to make an appointment or I just need to return that email or just you know something that that goes over that doesn't require a whole lot of thought to it and what I try to do in creating a master list is I prioritize that I prioritize the high cognitive and the low cognitive and then I merge them and I'll do a high cognitive then a low cognitive and a high cognitive and low cognitive 
It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes I do a high cognitive, and then I'll do two low cognitives. Or sometimes I'll do two high cognitives, and then I'm, I think I'm going to go do a low cognitive, and I find out, I don't need to do laundry. So I check that off and go right back to another high cognitive. And because I do this digitally, I'm constantly moving things through my schedule, but always aware of the next most important thing I need to do. And then I make my way. I go until I'm out of time. Then I go to my class and I do that, come back from class, and then I engage my to-do list at that point with time that I have. Now I admit, I have a flexible schedule in what I do. A lot of my tasks can be intermingled during the day. For some of you, you'll have to wait until the end of the day, but then once you get on to that time, you're like, okay, so let's say from seven o'clock till 11 is my time to get to-do list items done. That's when you start making your way through those things. What this does, and what I think is maybe the, the an issue with time management, is I've been in school for a long time and I have done my job for a long time. So I have a very good awareness when I have a to-do list item about how long that's going to take me to get it done. So I could theoretically schedule that time. But when you're doing assignments, when you're doing certain tasks early in your college career, sometimes it's hard to determine how long will that quiz take me? And until you become really savvy at that, um, you won't know until you start. So by prioritizing the to-do list and not setting a time to when to get that item done, you do it till it's done and then you go to the next one. Now this is challenged with things that have to get done within a week. And as you start making your way through this, you might have another pretty high priority thing that needs to get done, like cooking dinner, or you know, it might be a low cognitive thing that needs to get done, or it might be a, an assignment for another class. And that's when you have to be creative again. Okay, you take that priority assignment and you move it down, see if you can address that other priority assignment, still leaving yourself time for that other high cognitive load assignment that you didn't get done. This is an imperfect science. I move my list around all the time. Sometimes my own personal motivation will put me in a state where I just really can't do something right now. So I take a little break, but then try to make the effort to will myself back onto the task. So end of day, here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to understand my model enough to create one like it for yourself. So you're going to list high cognitive things, low cognitive things. You're going to submit a calendar that shows all your times that you have available to do things on this list. And you're challenged. I understand that. You are then going to have a master to-do list that is going to be the order in which you would do these things with your highest priority cognitive, high cognitive thing first, your highest priority low cognitive thing, high, second highest priority high cognitive, second highest low cognitive, just alternating. The alternating gives you a break from the high cognitive, but it also serves as a reward mechanism. When I, oh, and this is literally how I work, when I get this grading segment done, I get to do the dishes. I get to have that break from in my mind and actually doing dishes becomes a reward that I can look forward to in my, in my day. So this week, in chapter three, we've left the discussion. We're not doing that anymore. We're now moving into the assignment, which is to create that document. At the same time, we are beginning our discussions with the Pinker book. I've been telling people, get, get reading on that. We're looking at uh, pretty much the first couple chapters. We're looking at the video to kind of give you an overview and responding to uh, Steven Pinker's message. This is also the quote unquote week four initiative and how intricate this is gonna be, I don't know, but here's what's gonna happen. Across my classes, what I'm gonna be doing is making an assessment of individuals who may be behind, people who are missing critical things by the end of this week. So that's gonna include 
meeting with me, which is from chapter two. I'm still accepting meetings and looking, you know, making sure there's going to be that piece and then there's going to be the quizzes and the assignments and then it's going to include your participation in this first discussion on Steven Pinker. So I'm going to post at the end of week four, I'm going to post a... Um, the rubric that I'm going to use that if people are missing certain things or you know the, the criteria I'm going to use to make a referral to student services and that they will get your name and they will reach out to you and if you want to avoid that get all your work done make sure you're in that discussion and I won't put your name in but I'm trying to create a mechanism that I can use and all of the people that teach in my department can use for a week four, week five communication that would go out to individuals if they have not quite got into the class. At this point, it's still very early. There's still all kinds of things that you can do to correct it. Still plenty of time to get back on the rails again. And uh, I think that this is um, potentially a, a, a practice that I'll put into all of my classes. I'm going to be focusing on this one, a little bit on my other classes too, but just mostly in this class, kind of developing that rubric as to what will cause me to suggest that you might want to talk to some, some people in, in student services about the barriers you're experiencing in this class. So I'll be doing that. At the end of this week, this week we have the discussion on Pinker. We have the assignment for the 24 hour thing using my plan to see whether you adopt that plan or not at the, you know, from this point on, whether you think that works for you or maybe only pieces of it work. It's just an option. It works for me and I'm a pretty high productive guy. So I'm passing on the way I do it and maybe part of it or all of it will also work for you. So I look, forward to, I look forward to seeing those assignments and I look forward to a very rich discussion with our first adventures into Pinker. I hope you get a lot out of this book and what it means um, in terms of the thinking that goes along in the world of psychology. So have a great week and I will see you later.